on the Brush by Brandy Facebook and my YouTube channel. Um, my name is Brandy and I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. My husband Sean is here behind the camera. My aunt Lori is also here behind the camera. She can help answer any questions you might have about quilting. <laughs> Anyone have a question on quilting tonight? We will be answering yes. those too. I have a question. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of questions on quilting. All right, you guys, uh, we are going to continue working on this piece that we've been working on for a few weeks now. And I've got some finishing touches. So um, last week, uh, the first week we started on this one, we started out by adding the paint around the edges, uh, places like the legs have paint on them, around the drawer edges. Uh, we added all of our paper last week. So the entire body of this kidney shaped desk is covered in paper. And I've been telling you guys for a couple weeks, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with the wood top. I had stripped this wood top down it was pretty damaged when I got to the wood. It had a lot of discoloration. Um, so there was no way I could keep it wood and I didn't know what to do with it. Well, I figured out what I want to do with it. I Put actually it. love the top. It's probably one of my favorite tops that I've done. So I'm going to show you what I did to the top on this. Um, so we have a lot of like little things to do. It's going to kind of just be a little uh, sampler platter kind of night for furniture. So the first thing that I want to show you is I did add a mold here, and this is one of the new release molds from Redesign with Prima. And I want to go ahead and add a couple molds to the sides of this piece. And the one that I'm going to be using is this big guy here. Let me show you where I plan to put this. I can get this turned the right way. I kind of just want to add these to the side of my furniture piece. Let me see which way I think it should go. I think I'm going to go this way. And I'm just going to place them on this curve here, just as sort of a medallion to add a little bit of interest to the side over the top of this paper. This paper is from Mint by Michelle. Uh, we're using Mint by Michelle paper and Mint by Michelle paint this week too um, on this project. So we're going to go ahead and pour this mold here. Um, and I already poured this one and attached it. So the same process that I did on this one is what I'm going to be doing for the sides. So this mold that I'm going to be using is one of the new release Redesign with Prima molds. These just came out yesterday. This is one of Kasha's designs. Um, and this one is called, oh my gosh, did they not put the name on this one? Did you not write it on the back? Ah, uh, I did, but some of them had the name on there. So I thought they all would, but it might be going through that change right now because this one doesn't have a name on it. Um, I'm sort of sad about that because that was going to save me from having to write them all in Sharpie on the back of my molds. This one's called Majestic Flourish. Okay, and we're going to pour this using Amazing Casting Resin. And I'm starting out my live doing this because if you guys have watched me pour molds before, you know this is going to take a couple minutes to cure. And so I'll be able to set this aside and we'll come back to it uh, towards the end of the live and we'll go ahead and apply this to the furniture piece. So I've got my Amazing Casting Resin. This is from Alumalite. Um, it comes in um, an A and a B part, and I'm going to pour them into these little mixing cups. This is a pretty large size mold, so I'm going to fill each cup about three quarters of the way full. Um, how do I know that? I just learn over time about how much it takes to fill a mold. Um, I do always take out an extra mold or make sure I have extra portions that I might not need so that any extra resin that I pour um, doesn't go to waste. All right, so I uh, did equal parts of A and B in my mixing cups, and then I've got a little silicone cup here. And I've been showing these on some videos. Mine's, uh, mine's been well-loved. You can tell I should probably order a few more. These are super awesome because you can form a spout with them. They're nice and bendy. And so when you're pouring molds, getting it into that spout is really helpful. So uh, these used to be sold by Alumalite who makes the resin. I looked on their website this morning, they actually don't have them anymore, but you can get them off Amazon and they're just silicone mixing cups. Uh, you can say silicone cups for resin, um, but just little silicone mixing cups. This one is a thousand milliliters. I can barely that read the, like the measurements on them anymore. Is this a thousand? It's like three gallons. It's not a thousand. I can't read the number, a hundred? It's a hundred. I'm gonna go with a hundred. It's a hundred because I can small. read. I can read some of the numbers underneath it. I can't read that top one. All right. So now I could leave these sitting in their cups and nothing would happen. But once I combine them together into this mixing cup, is when the chemical reaction is going to start. So I actually got asked to come do a resin pour in my son's class. They want to make some stuff for their Halloween project, and so I'm gonna come demo resin pour with them, which I think what? is kind of cool. It is. It's a science project. 
So I think it's kind of cool to, to talk about that stuff with them. So then you stir for about 30 seconds. You don't want to stir too much longer or you're going to end up with a casting of your cup. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in your mold. You wanna make sure your mold's on a level surface. We're gonna call this level. I'm sure this stool is well-made and I'm gonna drizzle it. I'm pretty sure the concrete for a garage is level. Yeah, no, I know it's not because I, I, I take my pictures out here all the time and I have to make a correction for the fact well, that my, um, my garage is pitched for drainage. Dang. So sometimes I take my pictures and I'm like, is that crooked? Is that just me? Uh, no, it's really crooked. So it's practical applications. All right, so I just drizzled that in. The liquid ends up finding all the low spots for me. And then I'm gonna get this little center medallion here. All right, I've got the tiniest bit of resin left. Do I think I might be able to fill one of these little side guys? I'm not gonna use it on this piece, but I will go ahead and just fill it because I never waste resin. I'm gonna be able to fill this whole thing. All right, and then I'll just drizzle any excess into the center mold here. I would rather under pour my molds than over pour them. You never want your molds to have a hunchback on them. Um, it makes them hard to apply if they don't have a flat back. And then I'm just gonna use this popsicle stick to sort of feed. I've got a few little tiny details and I look it over and make sure that it's that liquid has flowed into all the areas of the mold. And that's it guys, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let this dry. Set it and forget it. Yeah, we're gonna set this aside. I'm gonna move all my tools to the side. And if you missed the beginning, we uh, have a special guest in the house today. Yes, we have my aunt. Laura, do you have any us. jokes for us? Anything you want to say? No. Oh, go ahead and turn the camera. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. And let's see, what should I do next? Next, we're going to go ahead and apply some glue to this. So let's talk about glue because a lot of what we're going to do tonight revolves around gold leafing. Let me find a, a garbage brush that I don't care about. So that's what I use for glue because it usually ends up getting stuck inside the parts of the brush and it just ruins brushes. So I try to, I keep some junky artist brushes like that one, Seen Better Days. That's a good one for glue. And um, that way I don't ruin good artist brushes Are you over and over this? again. Huh? <laughs> okay, so we're going to do some gold leafing tonight. Let's talk about adhesives for gold leafing. I'm going to use two different kinds of gold uh, of glue for my gold leafing. This is gilding glue. This is from Redesign with Prima. Um, and this glue I'm going to use when I want more con um, control over where my glue goes. Okay, so this stuff works really good, but it does take a couple minutes to set up. So I want to apply it to the areas because then I'm gonna move on. See how I'm trying to do this with the stuff that needs time? I'm gonna let it sit for a minute and then we'll move on to the next step. And we're gonna come back to some of the stuff we're doing right now. Oh, Jan wants to know if that's your uh, aunt that teaches you how to cook. Um, she needs to teach me better how to cook because I had a little accident yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah, did you is... change the bandaid out or no? No, I need oh, to. Oh, this, this is a call to Sherry. I'm waiting until after this <laughs> live to change it out because my bandaid looks terrible. I, I was in this kitchen making a sandwich yesterday and I sliced through my thumb and I went into shock you guys I um I felt like I was going to pass out and and I had to vomit and so it was <laughs> and awesome. then I said you know what screw this you need to get behind the wheel and drive yeah, around somewhere it, it was just bleeding I was trying to get out of the house I was like in a hurry too and I'm laying <laughs> on my kitchen floor and dry heaving in the kitchen sink so that's so what you get for playing with ninja yeah. stars and I have a really high pain threshold too so it was really weird to experience that Okay, so I want anyway. to gold leaf some of these uh, medallions that are on this piece, and this is one of them. So I'm going to apply this gilding glue here. It does take a few minutes to set up, and by set up I mean that it's going to go from the liquid that's in this container, and it's going to become a, a tacky glue, not tacky like, like I don't my know, wardrobe, like Sean's wardrobe, <laughs> like Sean's Hawaiian shirts. Those are gone. <laughs> I got rid. You made me get rid of those. Oh, they're still in the back of the closet. I'm pretty sure. And if you did get rid of them, you probably just gave them to one of our children. Yes. <laughs> they got upcycled. Because yeah. our children are going through a Hawaiian shirt phase right now. All of them are wearing Hawaiian shirts all the time. Okay, so I'm just brushing this onto the details. So I'm choosing this, <coughs> excuse me, this type of adhesive for these medallions because I need some control. I want to specifically place the glue in a certain area. I choose the gilding glue because I can brush it on. It's going to stay right where I put it. It's kind of thick like a gel, but it's going to need a couple minutes to become the tacky glue that I want it to be. 
I'm going to do the same thing on this medallion right here. I'm going to add gold leafing to this too. That's great. Okay, so you're going to do this and then you're just going to leave it and walk away from it for, I don't know, it, it's not going to be till the end of this broadcast that it's tacky. Uh, you don't need to apply it overly thick. I actually don't want it gummed up in, uh, you know, the details of these medallions. I'm going to try to keep it pretty thin and pretty even. The end of the broadcast. Oh, we're getting professional now. Yeah. <laughs> Using big words. All right. Sorry if you're seeing the back of my head right now. Nor electric ponytail. Yeah, thanks. It's an updo kind of night because I've been out here painting. I'm making, I'm making a gift for one of my customers. I'll share it with you guys after I give it to her, but I don't want her to know, so I can't show you guys. She follows me. It's a real problem. Stalker. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'll show you the one that I've already completed and that's on this side here. So this is, um, this is gilded with gold leafing. <laughs> yes, Nora, even my mini me is wearing Hawaiian shirts. Yes, they all, all three of them are. So this is all, this is done with gold leafing and I'm using kind of a combination of metallics here. I've got spray paint going on as part of my gold. I'm using um, redesign with Prima gold gilding wax and I'm using gold leafing. All right, you guys want to see what I did to the top? I think while that sets up, we can go ahead. You know, while I've got it turned this way, why don't we work on the leg? I'll show you what I did with the legs on this. Okay, so I want this gold leg here, but I want it to kind of fade into my blue paint. Um, when I was first painting this, if you guys remember from a couple weeks ago, I used a base coat of sort of a, a yellowy color under here to um, coat my furniture piece. And then I was testing out what color of gold spray paint I wanted these legs to be. So now that I've got that decided, I need to perfect the look because they're not done right how I want them to be. Um, but I did the back ones already. I'm gonna take this wheel dolly just off this one leg, just so I can sand around the ball of this foot. Okay, I just want them to be nice and smooth. Sherry says I got the Batman dad voice going. Oh, do you? Yeah, apparently I do. <laughs> it's only the voice guys trust me wait what all right and then um the the um spray paint that i'm going to use is this guy here this is from rustoleum it's a high shine it says uh bright shiny finish gold rustoleum metallic it's just a hardware store item it needs to be shaken really well every time you use this stuff does uh, Brush by Randy have an HR department? I'm really offended by that. Um, yes, she does. You're looking at her. <laughs> this is a one-man show. <laughs> I have the Judge and jury, one seat. <laughs> the second man is probably the one that wants to complain to the HR department. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, we would just fire him. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and if we get sued, it all comes out of the same bank account. It's a wash. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's really, really a zero risk. All right, you guys. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fully coat the bottom of this leg, but as I go up, I'm gonna pull back on my spray paint can and I'm gonna pull back on how hard I'm pressing the trigger. And I'm just gonna hit it with some white overspray as it goes up. So it's gonna sort of fade as you go up. So this takes a little, quite a bit of control. I'm gonna try to get this right. <laughs> control you yourself. If you don't get it right, you just put the blue paint back over it and you try the spray paint again. Down at the bottom is the easy part. Um, I also, you need to wear a mask when you're spray painting. I'm not gonna put one on because I'm trying to talk to you and I'll just do this one leg, I promise you. Okay, so I, I can go heavy on the bottom of the leg and then you'll notice I'm gonna pull back and I'm just gonna let overspray hit the top so that it fades into that blue. It's really pretty. It's kind of, it kind of looks like a gold dust as it goes up. Okay, and so I like that. And then I'm gonna turn it and it did take me a few tries to get all sides of the leg. It took me about three turns. Okay, so I just, I just lightened up on the trigger. It's not full pressure on the trigger. And I'll have to get the back side of that from the back. Sean's got to get the fan going on. Just wanted a little I'm bit. I'm going to so do that in the well there. ventilated area. I'm going to do it again on this one. This one I did already sand earlier. So same concept here. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> Don't I, try this at home. Full, Wait. <laughs> no, it's fine. You guys can play around with spray paint. There's all different kinds of looks and things you can do. With I do spray it too. Paint too. Under bridges and I don't overpasses. do I don't do full pieces in spray paint. Um, I I um I don't like the finish of it. In fact, I end up removing more spray paint, so I don't do full body pieces in spray paint. That's great accent. Okay, so it's just, um, I don't know, can, you want to get in close so you, they can see. It's just the spattering, you know, when, you're, when your can's not fully, or when your trigger's not fully depressed, but that spattering looks really pretty oh, going up camera. the leg. We're going to go in with this one. Here, I'll take you guys in. YouTube, this is you We're guys the seeing. Magic ride. So can you see how it gets lighter as you go up and it just turns into kind of a spattering right there. It's really pretty. So Facebook, what I'm talking about is this sort of sputtering that the paint does. It takes a little bit of control though to get that right. So try it, play I'm around really... with your spray paint can, but I like the look of that. The other thing I'm using spray paint for on this is my hardware. Okay, so this is my original hardware. Let me show you guys. It came on this piece. If you guys saw it when I first started working on it, this was a painted piece. It had been painted with chalk paint in a white finish and the hardware was painted with it. So I cleaned it up. I um, I used citrus strip, which is a, a chemical stripper to strip the old paint off. I scrubbed them with a wire brush. They're really badly discolored. They're not very pretty. So that's oh, my Donna, original hardware. You're, you're missing transfer it's behind the piece. Yeah, she it said, is. Uh, Cause you guys, if you guys saw my live on uh, on Wednesday, yesterday, was yesterday Wednesday? Yes, what day is today? today would be Where are we again? Cause we're on this broadcast. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have the release from Redesign with Prima. We have some new transfers that just came out. They're hanging on the wall behind me still, um, but I got to I got to unveil the new uh, the new release from Redesign. Really pretty designs. I'll show you at the end of the broadcast um, the piece we worked on yesterday and what my uh, video on YouTube will be about tomorrow. So tomorrow, one of those just tutorials is going to come out. What day is today? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to spray paint this hardware because it's really what badly the? discolored. Um, I just get these flat boxes from Costco. And I use Thanks, Fireball June. I use them for painting. Hey, Fireball June. Um, so same thing. Uh, when I spray paint hardware, I always start with the back side of my hardware first because then when that's dry, I'm going to flip it over and do the front side. Um, and I want that to be the most perfected side. So I start out by doing the back side of it first. Oh, man. These are little, these have a swivel to them. See Sounds that? Like my back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So these have a swivel to them. So I'm going to start out by doing the back side. This this can, even though I just use it, has to be shaken every time. Is that a shake weight? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to let the back side dry, and I'll flip those over and do the front, and that'll be my hardware for this piece. So my glue still drying. I can feel it starting to get tacky um, and I've got a few places that are a little more wet than others. Let's check on our mold. This mold is almost about set up. It's actually it's pretty set up. You know I think you're doing everything but standing up. Like I'm yeah, we're not, cameras we're constantly. Not yeah, we have a lot of stuff to cover tonight. <laughs> it's a lot. All right so this is the mold we just poured and I can flex the silicone in just those few moments and I can pop this uh, resin out of the silicone. All right, and that's my resin mold. This I also need to be spray painted. Of course. So it goes in the box. Yeah, turn that fan back on. You, yeah. can, you can just leave it on unless you, yeah? can, you can hear it, okay. yeah. Well, I didn't want anything to dry out your glue too fast or anything. Same thing, I'm gonna spray paint this. I want that glue to dry, so. Huh? Yeah, I can't fine. hear you, the fan's on. Big fan, big fan. This is what happens when I'm on only fans. See, come on. And it hit hit the other side of those um, that hardware. I didn't know I needed a mask. Yeah, you should have should have bring a mask to this broadcast. Not optional. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's start working on the top. Okay. So what's cool is I did the whole top of this desk because look, it came with like a little sample piece that I could pull out and do with you guys. So I'm going to show you the exact process I did on the entire top of this piece. Okay, so I started out 
by coating my top in a coat of my same spray paint. Same spray paint, I coated the entire top. So that's what you see on here now. It's just coated in uh, gold spray paint. It's got a little line right here, but I'm not gonna worry about that because I am gonna put a treatment over the top of the gold spray paint. So it doesn't really matter that I have a portion here. And that's just uh, stuff that I got on here when I was working on the rest of the top. Oh, Brenda, it's too late. OSHA won't even take my call anymore. Yeah, they're like, sir, Again? sir, we don't represent you. <laughs> we cannot help you. I should take this lid off completely. I've got a lot of screws. They usually ask to speak to the head of our safety department, and then I just hang up the phone. Like, we don't even have that. <laughs> That's a crock. Uh, I'm going to need little tiny, like this, little tiny jewelry box screwdrivers on these. They're little tiny baby screws. Maybe I can get this one out. Even this regular screwdriver is a little bit. Here, catch. Oh, got it. See that little, little tiny guy? These are nice to have, you guys. I use these on jewelry boxes quite a bit. These hinges need to be cleaned anyways. They are also painted white. Pretty much whoever painted this desk painted everything. The drawer sides, the hardware. They the, really like that color. Yeah, the everything got painted white. So I'm going to, and I do this a, a lot, I'll actually clean the hinges last. That way anything I get on them also doesn't matter. Um, I'm taking this off because the adhesive that I should have probably uh, taken these screws out before the broadcast, but I did not. And I'm just dropping my screws into the drawer. Usually I put all my hardware into a dish so that I don't lose anything. It all stays together. I actually had a lady on my live just yesterday comment on how important it is to keep your hardware together while you're working on a piece she had just lost her hardware. No judgment zone. Carry on. <laughs> All right. So hang on, guys. I'm almost done. And you'll see why in a minute, because I'm going to use spray adhesive. And I don't want it getting all over the inside of my drawer. You can clean it off with um, mineral spirits, but it's messy. Um, yeah, you can't have dirty drawers. <laughs> When did you start with that rule? I have to make sure my comments are PC. I have company. <laughs> did you see the joke on the counter? The kids had to look up a joke online and something on the counter. I read it and I was like, I feel like this could be material for our life. <laughs> like little kid jokes. Oh, because Logan has to come up with a joke for his teacher. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm going on a field trip with them. All right, and I'm going to pop this out. Bus. All right, so this is just the, the lid from this. Let's go ahead and put this drawer back in because I, I still have my adhesive setting up on the front of it here. So we'll come back to this drawer in just a minute. Okay, so this is just my top. I'm gonna try to contain my mess for once. Yeah. Not not the mess of my, <laughs> not the mess of my life. Just the mess of, just the mess from this top. All of a sudden we're going to psych. All right. Because I'm gonna spray this in in a spray adhesive. This is 3M Super 77 spray adhesive, and I'm gonna use this to apply the gold leafing on the top because the the spray adhesive works well. It works quickly, but you have zero control over where it's gonna go. So when I want precision application, I use the um, glue from Redesign that gets tacky. And when I can just kind of be all over the map with it, I'm just gonna use spray adhesive. Um, so what I just did is I'm unclogging the nozzle on this because every time you spray it, some of that adhesive gathers on the nozzle. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a spray of the spray adhesive. Pretty good coat on there, and I want to get this front edge too. I'm gonna get the side <laughs> and the fans going back on again. All right, and I'm gonna put some gold leafing on here. 
<laughs> True. All these fumes tonight may, might make Cheech and Chong jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're gonna have a good night either way, right? <laughs> if, the, if the life sucks, at least me and Chun won't know. My about recovery it. time yeah. isn't as good as it used to be. All right, so gold leaf. Oh, I need that fan off. Yeah, that can't happen. Yeah. Fans and gold leafing are a really bad combo. All right, so this is my sheets of gold leafing. It's imitation gold leafing. It's what? really a metallic foil. This is not 24 karat gold. People are always like, "Oh my gosh, do you have flakes? Are you going to collect them?" And I'm like, "It's worth about 30 cents." This is in Egypt. Sometimes we're going to let yeah. it go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, each one of them comes with a parchment paper that backs it, and I'm going to take my leafing and I'm going to place it as delicately as possible on the edge of this. And I'm gonna wrap the side edge, the back edge, and the front edge. And I use my uh, paper to place it down. So I'm trying to not touch it with my hand. Okay, so that all all that comes in contact with it is the um, paper. The 24 karat gold. Absolutely, 24 <coughs> karat gold, it's priceless. It would make this furniture piece worth like thousands. I don't think you'd ever get rid of it. All right. Oh, geez, you're going to gold leaf the whole top? I did gold leaf the whole top. It's already done. I'll show you guys. Well, we're going to go through the steps on this piece right here. All right, this one um, was stuck to the paper, so I'm going to use my hands, although I try to not do this. The oils from your hands can tarnish the leafing. Oh, that's it. I can't even watch. I'm going to use one of these extra pieces, and I'm just going to seat it into... The adhesive. Wrap that front edge. You better not waste any of it. Okay, this one Use does. All of this it. one does have a piece of paper. Even the flakes and the dust. There will be there will be some waste from gold leafing. No. There always is. Okay, and then I've got this kind of row across the back. That's not a, quite a complete row. So I'm gonna take some of my gold leafing and I'm gonna cut it. You're gonna use the good scissors or the ones that? I don't have any good scissors out yeah. here. If they were good scissors, they would not be in my work area. Because I, um, I know- Yeah, they come pretty good. Uh, That's fine. <laughs> For wire so cutters, those are good. It's totally fine. For printing shears. All right, and now I'm going to do across the back. So let me turn this around. Not sure I got my adhesive on the back, so let me go and spray that. Hmm? Again, I'm going to have to clean my hinges, so I'm not worried about their... Um, I also did not worry on this about lining up all the lines because I told you guys on my last slide that one of my pet peeves about gold leafing is you can see always the seams and I didn't want to have like really proper 90 degree seams on everything. So I actually tried to kind of stagger some of the seams so they're a little more irregular. Oh, interesting. Now I want to know if this will be done for her birthday. When's your birthday? Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, when is your birthday? You can't say happy birthday and not know when the birthday is. <laughs> I mean, I want. I mean, to, at some point I in 365 to, days, it's gonna. Occur. I want it to be happy no matter what. So does it matter if it's like next Thursday? Then I don't want it to be happy. See, the wish is the same. Still applies. That depends. Yeah. Oh, she. She makes me mad. Then I, you know. Well, forget your birthday. Uh, we have our middle son is also born in October, which means you're a Scorpio. So December eighth. Oh. <laughs> yes. This wow. Week, way yeah, to, if I'm still working way, way on this to jump in ahead December, there. then yeah, I don't know. All right. Now I'm using a little bit of the paper and I'm sort of pressing this down. What I really liked about this project is the um, gold leafing found uh, the pattern of the wood grain on this piece, and it sort of started taking on really pretty shapes. Now I guess you could actually be offended by her statement. Because you're working so slow, she doesn't know if this is going to be done by December 8th. Um, well, I'm hoping that we'll, we'll finish showing you everything by the end of uh, this hour. I'm trying to not even be on for an hour. 
All right, I have one more piece that I'm just going to use. I've got a little piece on the side here that I missed. And then I've got a little piece right here in the center that I missed. Let me see, make sure I've got everywhere else. This back side's good. Got a little spot right here. Okay, and then I'm going to take a soft brush. So let's see what I've got in here. All right, this guy's good. This is actually a makeup brush. And I used sort of a stippling pattern. And I'm pressing the gold leaf down into the wood grain. And then I should kick the fan on now. One, um, <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would look like, I don't know, it would look like a, it would be a really dramatic scene. Yeah. All right, so what I'm doing, oh, I got another spot that I see that I didn't get some leafing, so I'm just going to take one of my little scrap pieces and I stick it. The, the spray adhesive is very user-friendly. It stays nice and tacky. It's tacky from the minute you put it on. Do this edge. What's your work time with it? Um, gosh, I don't know. Nobody asked. I don't Excuse. even know that it ever stops being tacky. I think it, it really is like wherever you get spray adhesive, it's like never going away. Got a little tiny piece on the front I just saw. And this brush is a little soft, so I'm going to get something a little more aggressive. Okay, I want to mark up this gold leafing. I want it to look a little bit old and a little bit aged because I'm going to add some glazing over the top. The reason I chose to add glazing is because I put this on the top of my desk and I was like, whoa, that is super you were to turn bright. light on? It's yeah. really hard to, it was really hard to look at with a reflective surface. If anybody actually wanted to work up there, it was really bright. Even that brush is a little soft. All right, this is a natural bristle brush. And I, but can you see what that does? It dulls the leafing. You can see it here, right there, right there. It dulls yeah. the leafing using those natural bristles. Because I did even more to age this too. So I dulled the, the leafing with the natural bristle brush. This is also getting rid of all of my excess leafing. I will be finding this in my workspace for the next year and a half. It's like a really bad Easter Yeah, thing. it is. It's like, what do they say about glitter in the craft world? Same thing applies to gold leafing. Oh, man. Yeah, same thing. Like on couches and stuff? Yeah. Why do you have glitter on your couch? I'll give you a second <laughs> yeah, to think what, about what that. What was her name? That was your mom. <laughs> remember that? There was the glitter glue that got every... You don't remember that? No. Oh, my god. It doesn't... It sounds like my mom. Oh. I don't remember what happened. Drove me nuts for years until we got rid of those couches. I I've got a know. little spot right here that I need to put leafing on but i can't put spray adhesive because remember you have no control over it so when i need control like when i need to just do a touch up that's when i go to my gilding glue and it's just right here on the back of this huh. it's gonna get awkward because of my present company but marilyn calls it booty dust <laughs> Maryland. So, so about questions. that. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And then I took an abrasive pad. So this is one of the redesign with Prima um, polishing pads, but it's lightly abrasive. And I made some swirl marks. Like Marilyn's comment? Just slightly abrasive? <laughs> I thought Marilyn's comment was very friendly. <laughs> and I'm kind of making some swirl marks. And in some of the spots, I'm even taking it back to the spray paint gold metallic that's underneath. Just creating a really pretty pattern so that it looks old. You know, I tried to keep even my even my uh, randomness is usually on purpose. So I tried to keep my pattern kind of At the same time, I'm removing the excess, this spot where I need to apply that one extra piece that I missed, I'll do that in a minute, so we'll ignore that for, for now. So I'm taking off any extra gold leafing. I'm not being gentle with this at all. But what I want to show is it kind of starts to camouflage those 90 degree corners that you get with gold leafing that I don't like. Okay, so I did this on the whole top. 
Now, the other thing that I like about the um, spray adhesive is it's our, it's dry too. Now that I've covered it, I can keep working with this. So I don't have to wait for dry time or anything like that. So the next step that I did on here is I added some glaze. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of my glaze and I applied it over the entire surface. Rag? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Bottle. So close. And, and a rag? I thought I had one over here. Would you like a rag? Yeah, can you grab me one? I'm, um, I'm using a Mr. Bottle to dilute my glaze. You glaze. a t-shirt? Yeah, that's fine. Glaze is water-based, so I can elongate it, and I really just want a really thin layer. It's gonna find those swirl marks that I just made, it's going to find those areas that I um, use the abrasive to go back down to the spray paint, and it's going to age it all. Jane from Tasmania. Ooh. Okay, and I also like that the glaze, the gold color that's in the paper that I used on the furniture piece, it's a little bit of an antique gold. It has a little warmth to it. So the glaze um, actually takes down some of the brightness of the gold leafing. So now I'm going to wipe this away, you guys. I'm going to try to hold this up while I do it. And I even wiped the glaze away a little bit irregularly. So can you see in here how it picked up some of those swirl marks I made with the abrasive? So this is what I did to the entire top, and it looks so pretty. Right. I need to put my glaze on the back. It actually wasn't a very long process either. It may look like a lot of steps, but it didn't take a lot of time because there's not a lot of precision to it. This side over here, I want to age a little bit more. There we go. <laughs> Donna's got a point. Just took my sock off. You needed a cloth for her. I know he was being really selfish, huh? So I'm, I'm wiping the glaze back a little irregularly. I even like, you know, over here where it gets some areas that are a little darker. Let's go across this front edge here. Make sure I got glaze in all of that. Okay, and so the result that I get is this really, it's gold leafing, but it's its this antique gold effect. It's got all this interest in it. And then I use the gloss, I used a gloss clear coat to seal it. And the gloss just keeps it nice and shiny, but it's still got this antique look to it. It is a beautiful top. I absolutely love it. Can we just stop up selling? Can I just show them the top? Yeah, Sean can show you the top now. So let me put this on top of here. This is, this part is unsealed. I do need to add my clear coat to the top. Make sure my glaze on this side matches. All right, I won't be able to shut this because my hinges are off. But that is how I did the top on this piece. It is, it is perfect. It's okay. See, I can move this too so you can see the whole top. It's really pretty, you guys. The gloss clear coat, I told you guys I don't use gloss a lot, but if I had to choose a place that I would use gloss, it would 100% be over gold leafing. It is. It kept the sheen of it, but it's got this really pretty antique look. It's very soft, very touchable, and it's well protected. I have three coats of gloss clear over that gold leafing right now. All right, so now this part over here is nice and dry, and I can tell because I had um, the gilding glue is kind of white when I first put it on and it's dried to a clear color. So I know I'm ready to go ahead and apply my gold leafing to this leg. Um, I highly recommend if you can have a case for your gold leafing. It's like a briefcase. It's like, um, it's like Pulp Fiction. Uh, no, don't, don't. Yeah, it's don't, like a scene out of Pulp Fiction when I open this up. Don't, don't try to be funny. Did you guys ever wonder what was in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? Don't. I can't help don't. it. It just comes naturally. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I'm going to pick up a sheet of my leafing and I'm going to place it right onto this decoration. And I want it to go into all those details. Okay, but there's no way that you can get gold leafing to not want to break away naturally when you put it into details like this. When you did the top, did you sand between coats at all? Um, sand between coats. What coat? Oh, between um, coats clear. of my clear coat. Yeah. I did only on the very <laughs> last coat. I just gave it a really light sanding because um, the reason I did that is I that, that way I had two coats of the clear already underneath. So any unevenness I was sanding, I was sanding the clear coat. I didn't want to risk sanding my gold leafing. And if you only have thin layers and you sand too much, you can get through. So I had two coats of clear, did a final light sanding, and then I put my one final clear coat on. So it's nice and smooth. It has a light texture, which is just the texture of that wood grain. Um, and then a little bit of the texture from the gold leafing, but it's, it's, it's weird. It's like a smooth texture. It's and then to... what color or a color? What brand did you use? What kind? Because uh, someone has used it before or done this before and it turned the leafing gold, uh, green. Okay. Uh, so I used, um, I use, it, it, you can tarnish gold leafing. I use Annie Sloan clear coat on here. Um, you can seal your clear coat in a metal leaf sealant, or you can spray it with a coat of shellac before you put your clear coat on. That will create a barrier between your clear coat and um, the leafing because the clear coats we use are water-based, and so the shellac creates that barrier. So you can do that, um, or a metal leaf sealant over your leafing will, will keep it from tarnishing. It's not real gold, so you don't know what type of metals you're getting in there, and some will react with things that are in the water-based clear coat, so that coat of shellac will save you from that. Okay, so I kind of pressed my leafing into here, but I've got areas that it breaks away because I'm trying to force it to go into these details. So I'm going to pull this excess off the side, and I'm going to try to fill in. It's never going to be all of it, but I'm going to fill in some with that excess leafing. So then I so I'll pull away this piece right here and I'll just put it into and it'll fill in some of that area. And that way I get as much full of the leafing as possible. So pull away this piece right here. And I can use this up here, try to fill in this little spot. I'm not trying to cover all of the blue. I do want a little bit. You think I, you could use like a poly? Even oil base over the top of that? Um, I don't know. You just never know. You don't know what's in them always. So I know the shellac works, but I wouldn't be able to tell you that everything does. You know, you're kind of taking a risk of what's in them. Look, it's snowing. Gold leaf. Okay, and then I'm going to brush away that excess. Once I feel like I filled in that area, I can brush away all my excess gold leafing. Really bad dandruff. Ah. So satisfying now. All right, and once I've got all that excess removed, I'm going to glaze this as well. And the glaze is going to get down into those low points and it's going to antique this gold leafing also. So I'm going to brush this. I'm brushing it and digging it into all those low points. And I want to get it around the outside edges also. And then I'm checking for anywhere that still has that fresh color of blue, because I don't want to see any of that. I want to make sure that's all got the glazing in there. So the glaze doesn't tarnish? Who knows, but I kind of want this to look oh, kind of old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, and then I'm going to wipe away my excess. And I get this really pretty sort of antique. I'm taking away the shine on this. Okay, but I'm leaving it in all those low points. And then I'm just gonna take my mister bottle and I'm gonna wet this rag because I don't want it super messy. So I'm gonna clean up some of these edges. This is that leg that I already finished with my um, paint finish down below. 
And so with this addition, this is done. What makes you decide to use uh, glaze over wax and vice versa? Um, I like uh, glaze when I'm trying to get into fine details and I want really kind of crisp, deliberate, uh, you know, that crisp placement of it. And I use wax when I want that kind of smudgy, ethereal, uh, you know, shadowy effect. Um, you can do that with glaze. You can get the shadowy effect by dry brushing with some glaze, but wax does that smoky, ethereal effect. And this gets down at all those low points and gives me this like perfectly antique look. So glaze is when I want the more like um, probably uh, finer details and wax when I have kind of more open, broad, wide details. Or right. turn, do me a favor, give the people what they want. Turn that table this way. Nobody wants to see you. They want to see that. Yeah, that. So that's this, this leg would be finished. Although over here, I do need to come back and sort of sputter that uh, my gold paint on this side because I was coming from this angle. So this side, I need to perfect it a little bit. But and that's going to be... What mold did you use on that leg? Um, this, this is original to the piece. But I am going to add this cast mold to the side of this. Can you give me some type on? Apparently I forgot that. Yeah. So this is the mold that we cast and then I spray painted it. It's still a little bit bendy because it's freshly cast, but it's dry enough that I can touch the paint. So this is a great spot that I can go ahead and apply it um, because I'm applying it to a curve. If I walk away and let this resin harden, it's going to be harder to bend it. I would need to use my heat gun. And then I probably would need a little bit of painter's tape to keep it on that curve. I'm using tight bond quick and thick as my adhesive. All right, and I'm gonna eyeball. I want it sort of like center on this side. So I'm looking at my legs right here. That's so weird. I thought you were the measuring twice. Um, I'm not really the measuring type. So I'm <laughs> kind of eyeballing like center would be right here. So I'm going to, I kind of just mentally noted, noted. Mm -hmm. it's and down. Well, I like this way. Okay. okay, and then I can just go ahead and seat that in there. Tape. Would you, you like tape? Here? It'll hold. I think it'll hold. Okay. Cleaning up any areas that my glue came out. I've seen this show. No, it's gonna hold. It's, it's okay. You sure. Yeah. Okay. And then the second piece of this mold was this little tiny medallion, <clears throat> and I am gonna go ahead and use that. And I think this just kind of adds balance. So I've got these medallions on the legs. I've got one on the center drawer and now it'll wrap to the side. And I'm gonna just gonna place this little button. I'm gonna hold this for a second cause that one's not gonna, oh no, it will hold. All right. All right, so it kind of wraps the piece and I've got my gold, gold details Wrapping all the sides of this piece. Can you get this way so people can see it? Sorry, Instead of you just you know, sucking up time for the camera. Okay, my glue will dry clear. So anywhere that I see that, I just try to make sure it's not come bubbling out from any of the sides. Um, if that is the case, like I've got one spot right here, I just get it with an artist brush and then make sure and wash your brushes as soon as they touch the glue. You don't want the glue to dry in your brushes. So that's that. It's off a little. You better shut your mouth. <laughs> Looks good to me. All right. And from here, you guys, this will get sealed in clear coat over the entire thing. So it's got a unifying shine. Now, there are things that you could do in different orders. For example, this mold could go on over the clear coat. It doesn't need to be sealed. But I usually do my clear coats as a final step. So everything gets it at the very last step. So it's gonna go over all this, you know, the gold and everything. It'll all have a unifying shine, except for my top is gonna to stay that high gloss. That's my plan, all right? I'll, and then after that, my uh, hardware, it's only on, I've only have the backside done, but my hardware already has these pretty medallions and then it'll, the poles will hang. So that's my plan. Wow, we've been on for a long time. 
Okay. You must Shut happen. up, Brandy. All right, you guys want to see what my video is going to be on tomorrow? Of course. Now, so we're going I don't want to get comfy. We're going on a field trip. All right. Uh, it's really messy out here. I have a lot of furniture out here. I have a delivery this weekend to go on. What? Yeah. I mean, by that, I mean, Sean has a delivery this weekend <laughs> to go on. <laughs> I have t a teenage son. You Do you know? Do you guys know what you should get uh, for deliveries? A teenage, a teenage son. son? Highly recommend it. No, I, I don't yeah. think it's worth the investment. That yeah. kid eats too much. <laughs> it was um, it was a business decision I, I made. I could pay a couple hundred about, dollars to deliver it, or I could, you know, between 15, that and college. Fifteen years ago, I decided to invest in one. It's finally paying off. All right. Um, nope. Yeah. Super messy here. All right, let's go. Are you trying to get to a, the way over there? The purple piece over here. Oh, man. Here, I'll take one if you take oh, the other. You're, you're so nice to me. All right, we're going on a walk. Don't look at that. Do, 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 do. All right. This is going to be my video tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So this is the piece that I showed you guys. Just a peek is all you've seen of it. And then I unveiled it on my live video yesterday. This is a new transfer from Redesign with Prima that just came out. Um, if you guys watch my lives, we worked on this piece together live. So you guys already know the paint process. Um, but I told you guys on the live, I originally intended this for another transfer. And then when this one arrived, I was like, it's perfect. It was meant to be. Look at the plum colors that are in it with the whites. It was the perfect colors. So this is that transfer. This is the one that I saw and knew that these colors fit it. Even though I didn't plan it that way, it was kind of a, a happy accident. So you guys check out all these new transfers from Redesign with Prima. This is another one I've got coming up. Yeah, that was a that was another furniture piece. Yeah. This is another one not I worked gentle. on my live yesterday. Mm, so weird. Yeah, no, that's fine. That one's not touched yet. So I don't have to be. All right, but the purple one will be my live video on my YouTube channel tomorrow. So if you guys aren't already, go over there and subscribe um, for a weekly painting tutorial. And you guys will see that purple one come together. And this will be a, li a little bit later, but this is another one of the new transfers from Redesign. Gorgeous colors in this in this little Bombay chest. So this will be an another future piece that comes up afterwards. I got to finish this one up still. It doesn't have any clear coat on it. Um, yeah, so, all right, you guys, I'm going to pop off and let you guys go. Next week, we'll come back and we'll start a new piece together on my live. Um, everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you next Thursday.